Oh, so we've been getting, this is Nathan the Rooster. He wanted to join me for this video. <laughs> so Jill and I sat down for a Q&A Q session and... <laughs> What's funny is the number of animals that we have either, you know, brought to the farm or adopted is, it's so many, but I actually don't think of myself as an animal person. I love birds and I like cats, but that's about it. When we first moved to the country, one of the very first things I started collecting was, um, like rare breeds of chickens. I wanted to start a rainbow egg business. And so I, I had over a hundred birds, many, many different varieties. And I also had ducks. And so that's kind of where like the, the birds have been a big part of our like life in the country since the very beginning. All right, putting the ladies to bed. Everybody's having a snack. Pretty much I've raised every kind of bird that is offered. There's a thing called chicken math where you go, you get three chicks at the, you know, at the feed store or wherever. Yeah, and Jen's, Jen's my younger sister. And then two die, so then you gotta go get three more. What's funny is that we're both obsessed with birds. Because they, they always have to have a friend. You end up with 10 chickens when you really just meant to have two, it's chicken math. Jen used to bring her little boys up here to visit the farm and we had chickens. I feel like she had one of every kind and just seeing them all. With chickens, we've had Rhode Island Reds and Barred Rocks and Morans and oh, all kinds of Banties, the Duke Clays. Oh my gosh, I mean, I, dozens and dozens of different breeds. I don't know, I'd never really spent time around chickens specifically. My youngest put them in a wheelbarrow and was like pushing them around. I was like, these are fun, they're so nice. She got bit by the chicken bug and then Seems like chickens turned into turkeys, turned into maybe emus. I think chickens are the gateway bird. If you have chickens, you've gotta have a turkey. The turkeys are nice, they're so nice. I have one mean turkey right now, but I don't wanna get rid of him because I think it's really funny, he'll just chase. Jenny's bird obsession has gone so much farther than mine. I keep it simple. I just, right now I'm just all about ducks. I'm just, ducks are, they have, you know, they're good workers. <laughs> I just want everything here on the farm to have a purpose and to be, you know, helping and working. With any of the animals, like if we raise chickens, it's gonna be for eggs, duck eggs. They're totally edible, but I don't think they taste good. So a lot of people that do use duck eggs, they put them in baking. The reason that we have ducks, besides just them being adorable and funny, they help with insects on the farm. We call them slug patrol. You know, if you have earwigs, snails, and slugs, those are the three that I see them really going after. They're almost like little vacuum cleaners. We've found that about a dozen ducks will take care of an acre to an acre and a half of ground and keep the bugs really in check. It's a natural way of dealing with pests without having to use poisons. 
Hey, you want to see the cutest thing? This is our little slugger. It's our little flock of sluggers. They're going to help on the farm. And ducks are really cute. They just bring a really great vibe to the place. And they're pretty low maintenance. Like, you don't need a ton of space. They do need some water. You can have a kiddie pool or a metal trough, something they can get their beak into. But the downside to them is they're messy. Wherever their water is, it gets mucky and poopy. Chickens are very destructive. Ducks will kind of trample things, but they're not as destructive as a chicken. So you could have them in your garden, and they're not going to do a lot of damage. So this is Chris's evening ritual. So he trained the ducklings from when they were babies. And they should be waiting for us. Oh, they're already inside. You do have to protect them from predators. We're really good about putting them away at night and letting them out in the morning. So then he just closes up their house and then they're safe from predators. Anything you want to say about the ducks? Night ducks. <laughs> the ducks we've had, Muscovies and Runners and Khaki Campbells and who else have we had? Cayugas. I love to get them and collect them and watch them and enjoy them. But Chris, he is in the end, the one who ends up taking care of them. Chris, how do you feel about the birds? <laughs> how do I feel about the birds? I've always got along with it. I have a love-hate with, with the birds. If Chris got an award, it would be like good sport or like always willing to go along with my ideas. I don't feel like that's not very safe. What, for me to be driving and holding <laughs> the camera? We just received the call that we're, we have ducks at the post office. There's a couple ways that you can get ducklings. You can get eggs and hatch them yourself. You can go to like the local feed store or farm supply and then you can just pick out a few of them. But if you're really serious about it or you want a larger quantity of them, they do ship them in the mail. How many times have we come to this back entrance to pick up birds, right? Alright, got our babies. Can you hear them? As soon as chicks or ducks hatch, they absorb all of the yolk in. Like, that's their food source. And they have, it's like two to three days that they can live without food or water. And they put them in a box and they mail them to people all over the country. That's the way they've been doing it for probably 100 years. Can you see how they did? Hey babies. It's kind of amazing to me that they can actually ship live birds in the mail. Oh my goodness, look at you guys. Hello. Hi. Oh, they look great. <laughs> If you are a, a bird person, you cannot go to the feed store in the spring. Because if you walk into those doors, you immediately hear that little tiny cheeping in the background. I'm like, I just want to go look at the ducks really quick. I just want to go look at the chickens. And of course, we come home with a box of birds and Chris is shaking his head. Like you can't leave the feed store without getting more birds, even if you already have them at home. There's something about it that it's an addiction. <laughs> They're so cute. 